have to ask you this because this is the craziest thing I've ever heard, literally, and I've been doing this four seasons. Is it true that your mom had you live on Alcatraz a little bit when you were a child? Like, what's that story? Yeah, you know, I was, I was born and raised in San Francisco. Yeah. And, <laughs> and briefly in 1969, uh, uh, a group of young Native American students from San Francisco State decided to take over Alcatraz Island as kind of a political statement. As most of you know, Alcatraz was a federal penitentiary up until 1962. Yeah. And it remained um, out of operation until 1969. And these young students were smart enough to cite an old treaty from the 1800s that cited any government held land that was not being used reverts back to the sovereignty of native people. Wow. So it was a political gesture um, that was national news, international news for that matter. And my mom was a part of the group that then settled on the island for during the 18 month occupation. I was five years old um, and I lived in the city, but I would say every weekend, at least two nights a week, we were living on the island. That, your mom is so cool. That's my, that's my brother Peter, who's a filmmaker now, and my youngest sister, Verushka. I was actually meant to be in that shot, but I got bored. <laughs> you got bored on Alcatraz? And I was running around <laughs> the other part of the cell block, so. Yeah, I've been to Alcatraz. That would be a scary place kind of for a kid, or But fun. it wasn't scary at all because, yeah. you know, I think parents are different about their responsibilities in raising kids these days. It wasn't yeah. that my mom didn't care about us. She was like, just go play. And so we'd go, Free, yeah. we'd go around to the industrial side of the island and, you know, throw rocks at windows and go crabbing. You know, we'd go down on the shoreline and, and, and look for crabs, et cetera. But uh, it was the ultimate playground, really, for me and my brother and my, my three sisters. Yeah, it's just a really cool thing, too, to, like, introduce something that's important like and, and show your kids to think outside of yourself at such young ages that's cool yeah you know it, it, this was in the aftermath of my mom getting a, div a divorce from my father uh, mm -hmm. and she was an immigrant she came from from Lima Peru at the age of 14 and so I think she felt a, uh, a little left untethered and so when she found this native community and it embraced her fully uh, she found in a way her her own sense of identity and it's an identity a mm -hmm. native identity that she uh, left us as a legacy. You know, she actually called the young Mohawk leader, Richard Oaks, who was the leader of the young student group that took over the island and got him on the phone when he was on the local KQED PBS channel. And she said, I'm Native American from South America. Does that count? He said, Indians of all tribes come down. And she said it's the first time that's, that she was in the country that she felt like she belonged. But what's unusual is this habit we, we have had historically of trying to put everyone in a specific box. This is what you are and that's your identity. Leave the identifying to the individual. It's something I continue to hand down to my own children. That's cool, you had a rad mama. She's, yeah. and listen, she's, she's still doing the do. I mean, yeah. my mother is, she's the center of the universe for all of us. That's so cool. Not everybody gets that kind of family. That's kind of magical. It's true. And, and that's the American story. I mean, an immigrant comes to, to this country, she Absolutely. has children, and she ends up finding a way to contribute.